Consider an engine that does not require any propellant. It appears to be impossible, and it most likely is. That hasn't stopped one NASA engineer from developing a hypothesis about the M-Drive, a helical engine that could defy physics and generate forward thrust without the use of fuel. In this video, we will discuss how such a creation would allow us to travel the far reaches of space and this would arguably be the most exciting technological advancement of the century. Need for Speed NASA has expanded its research horizons and is trying its best to reach Mars and other planets in search of life. For this big mission, they need something extraordinary that can fulfill their dream of exploring the vastness of space. Space is simply too big to explore and it would literally take thousands of years, if not millions, to even reach our closest neighbors. Consider that our nearest solar system, Alpha Centauri, is 4.367 light years away, which means it would take us 73,000 years to travel there with current technology. We could use rockets to go through space, but the amount of fuel we'd need to carry would be impractical. As a result, we're in desperate need of something that can fix all of these issues while still moving at incredible speeds. However, even rockets have limitations, such as the speed at which they can propel a spacecraft. We'll need something that can generate a lot of thrust without requiring a lot of gasoline because there are no gas stations in space. NASA has recently been at the top of its game, and they are always attempting to solve bigger problems. In his spare time, NASA engineer David Burns has been doing just that. He claims to have created a concept engine that could hypothetically accelerate to 99% of the speed of light. If you think that's wonderful, just wait. It gets even better. This engine would not even need propellant to do this. This engine, according to reports, would propel a spacecraft around without the use of fuel and creates no exhaust. Simply plug it in, turn it on, and go. It's known as the M-Drive or Impossible Engine, since it claims to be able to perform the impossible. How does this engine work? The helical engine exploits a flaw in Einstein's relativistic theory by speeding a loop of ions to near light speed and then adjusting their velocity and mass according to the rules of relativity, allowing the engine to move forward without needing to shoot anything out behind it. The idea here is that this NASA engineer proposed an idea that has been thought about before. This is not the first time someone came up with it. But in short, he proposed the type of engine that would not really require any kind of propulsion medium. It would not really need anything to be honest, except for a few things on the inside. And it would create thrust or actually create power by using Einstein's relativity ideas and by employing what's known as the relativistic shift. In a nutshell, this engine would lack the main features that a regular space engine has. The propulsion here would not be any form of exhaust. In a normal system, if you push an object on the inside of an enclosed environment like in a box, it wobbles back and forth and doesn't really get any motion down except for a minor motion. So in other words, you can't really make an engine with this unless you suddenly start accelerating this part to what's known as relativistic velocities. And so the basic principle here is that as you get closer and closer to the speed of light, there are a lot of things that start happening a little bit differently for you. You may already know about the so-called twin paradox and this of course refers to the fact that the time for one of the twins traveling closer to the speed of light starts to slow down. So when the twin returns to Earth, he or she will actually be a little bit younger than the other. But it's not just the time, it's actually a lot of things. It's things like the length that also changes and of course the mass. So in this case, as you move closer and closer to the speed of light, the mass of the spacecraft goes up dramatically. This is what we refer to as the Lorentz transformations. And when the Lorentz transformation is applied, the transformation here actually increases the mass of the object to the point where it starts gaining acceleration and of course velocity. And this will continue until the object is moving really really fast. So in theory, this is totally possible. This is actually a very logical and very solid theoretical model that could technically work. Defying the Law of Physics When David Byrne published his work called The Helical Engine, it made quite a stir among the entire space world, levels of which had previously only been witnessed in the legendary M-Drive. Some even stated that the basic foundation of this new engine may be violating physical principles. Some claim that, while the engine concept is fantastic, it's only so on paper because it's practically impossible to realize. So let's analyze it. 
Both the M drive and Robert Cook's engine were never satisfactorily proven and broke the conservation of momentum, a fundamental physical law. The principle of momentum conservation, which states that the momentum of a system remains constant in the absence of any actual forces, suggests that this helical engine should not even be possible. However, there's the special relativity loophole. Unlike the other devices, the helical engine employs special relativity, which states that an object develops mass as it approaches light speed. Burns envisions replacing the box in the ring that he used in his illustration with a more helix-shaped accelerator that generates a net thrust in the desired direction. The engine would then accelerate ions contained in a loop to relativistic speeds and then modify their velocities to alter and change their mass. The engine moves the ions back and forth. The engine has no moving parts except for the ions traveling in a vacuum line while being trapped inside electric and magnetic fields to produce thrust. So far, everything has gone pretty smoothly. The engine concept has yet to be reviewed and tested, and many are already questioning whether it will be a success. If it does show promise and prove to be a success, several fundamental physical rules will be called into question. Others say that it would not necessarily break the laws, but rather enhance our grasp of the principles of physics, implying that we may have a lot more to learn. In any case, unless there are precise physics tests and proof to support it, the principles of physics will remain unaffected. A lot of people criticized Byrne for his latest paper, yet we thought that this engine couldn't function. But we also thought that this engine couldn't work out. Where the energy would come from while at the same time, how much energy you'd need to create such an engine. But unlike other media sources that went as far as criticizing this author here, suggesting that maybe he should check his math with his colleagues first before publishing this. We wanted to take a different approach and go through the details of his paper and just see what makes sense and what doesn't. So first and foremost, the complete box experiments that we discussed previously make perfect sense. This is a fully theoretical concept that we know works and have demonstrated numerous times. The Lorentz transformation is a real phenomenon, and we must be aware of it when it comes to satellites orbiting our planet. GPS satellites, for example, must constantly readjust themselves and correct for the Lorentz transformation because, despite orbiting not far from us, they experience some time dilation. But one thing we couldn't figure out was how to transfer this motion without actually pushing anything back. So in other words, we say that the waves keep pushing back on the box from both directions and even if we were to accelerate it to great velocities that are essentially close to the speed of light, even at this point because we're accelerating it with some sort of electromagnetic propulsion. But how would this function in a confined space? Well, in his work, Byrne proposes a very smart approach. Although it's not yet necessarily practicable, instead of having objects push back and forth, you would have them spin, which would solve all of these problems. In other words, imagine it as a spinning finger that you move very quickly and then suddenly press in one way with all your force. This of course would save momentum and keep the spaceship from going in the opposite direction. It would simply kind of wobble, but it would not travel in the opposite direction you wanted it to. It's unclear how exactly this would be accomplished right now, because we don't believe we have the technology to do so now. But it's not far from the realm of probable outcomes, so technically, this could work. There will always be challenges with anything new, especially something that has never been done before. The new engine is no exception, and many say that the consequences are simply too overwhelming in this case. There are numerous factors to consider when it comes to the NASA helical engine. The size of the engine, for example, would have to be 200 meters long and 12 meters wide to even be considered, making it unsuitable for space flight. It would also have to be extremely powerful, with over 165 megawatts of electricity required to generate a single neutron of thrust. That is, a large amount of input would be required for a very teeny tiny amount of output, which is incredibly inefficient. To attain substantial speeds, the engine would also require a frictionless environment in space. Burns himself has indicated that if enough time and power are available, the engine will be able to reach 99% of the speed of light. This machine solely uses Einstein's special relativity, which is where the problem lies because there is always an action and reaction, complicating matters for the helical engine. 
The helical engine is still on paper for the time being, but it certainly opens up new routes and concepts that could see humanity going into space at the speed of light. A machine of this speed could transport men to Mars in less than 13 minutes or to the moon in less than a second. Dr. Burns emphasizes the benefits in his research, suggesting that an engine of this type might be utilized for longer-term satellite station maintenance, because it would never need to be refueled. Even though the engine has not yet become a reality, his invention is definitely unusual as it eliminates the need for rocket fuel entirely, similar to the M drive. And if his engine works as he expects, it would fundamentally change the concept of space travel. This brings our video to an end. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And also, hit the bell icon to receive the latest updates about space and technology. And also, tell us in the comments section if you think this new engine will be able to defy the laws of physics and is really possible to travel with the speed of light.